Okay, so we're going to try and move on with the course girls. So I'm going to try and uh, move on to some of the next topics using these videos. Um, we'll try them. We'll see how they work. And if they're unclear or they're not working, we, we can try something else like maybe uh, meeting up as a class on Teams. But we'll see how the videos work first. So we've been talking about waves for the last while. And our next topic for waves is the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, what is the electromagnetic spectrum? Well, the definition for the electromagnetic spectrum is it is the range of all electromagnetic range of all waves which travel by electromagnetic radiation. So hopefully you can see that there at the end of the page. But what does that mean? That's the definition that you have to learn. The range of all waves which travel by electromagnetic radiation. Well, it's not something you need to worry about too much in terms of explaining, but just so you understand it. Um, I'll talk through, through it a little bit. So you remember back in junior cert, you would have a bar magnet. And one of the practicals you did was you made or you discovered what the shape of a magnetic field around a bar magnet looked like. And it looks something like this. So that's the magnetic field there. That's the shape of the magnetic field. Now, what is a magnetic field? Well, it's it's an invisible field or an invisible area where if you place something magnetic, like, for example, a piece of iron uh, in the field, that piece of iron will experience a force and that force will pull it towards the, the magnet. Or if you put a compass in it, the compass will point in a certain way. So it's an invisible area where something experiences a force. Now, you learned about magnetic fields in junior cert. Uh, you're also going to learn about electric fields in leaving cert. And you wouldn't have learned about them as such in junior cert, but you've definitely seen some of their impact. So, for example, in junior cert, you were told if you had something that's positive and something that's negative, and you put them side by side, they will attract. Well, why do they attract? They attract because they're in each other's electric fields. And the electric fields, and you don't have to worry too much about it now, are the area around them where if you put something else in which has an electric charge, it will experience a force. So why am I talking about this? Well, because electromagnetic waves are basically a wave where we have a magnetic field moving through the air. And that magnetic field gets stronger and weaker, stronger and stronger, weaker and weaker, stronger and stronger, weaker and weaker. It changes as it moves through the air. And it's called an electromagnetic spectrum because not only is there a magnetic field moving through the air, but perpendicular to it, there is an electric field moving through the air. So basically, these waves are just these magnetic and electric fields moving through the air. You don't need to be able to explain that, you just need the definition. So that's what uh, the electromagnetic spectrum is. Now, the second, it's, it's a spectrum of all the waves which travel this way. Now, what does the word spectrum mean? Well, spectrum means, and there's a picture of magnetic and electric uh, fields moving through the air, or an electromagnetic wave. Spectrum basically means that it's a range. And basically, lots of different waves travel this way. For example, radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, uh, visible light, the light you see, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. All of these waves are exactly the same thing, and that's what's interesting about it. Visible light travels by these um, electric and magnetic waves that move through the air, electric and magnetic fields, and so does radio waves. But we're only able to see visible light. You're looking at the computer screen right now and visible light is coming from it into your eyes through these waves. Infrared travels through electromagnetic waves as well. So all x-rays, so all of these things are actually the same. They travel exactly the same way. But why can we see visible light and why can we not see radio waves or why can we not see x-rays? Well, it's got to do with the, the wavelength and the frequency of each wave. So if we look at radio waves, radio waves are electromagnetic waves which have a really large wavelength. And when I say really 
large wavelengths. Some of them can be, you know, 10 meters and bigger uh, in terms of their size. Some of them can be a kilometer. So it's at one kilometer between the point on one crest to the point on the other. And as we move along the spectrum to the next type of wave, we get to microwaves. And microwaves are waves which are exactly the same, except they have a smaller wavelength. Their wavelength might be one centimeter. And as you can see, as we move from left to right, the wavelength gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, as the wavelength gets smaller, the frequency is actually getting bigger because we know as wavelength goes down, frequency goes up. They're inversely related. So, as I said, all these waves are exactly the same thing. It's just they have different wavelengths and frequencies. So our eyes are obviously designed or have evolved to see electromagnetic waves between a certain range of frequencies between here and here. Um, but that doesn't mean that the other waves aren't moving past us all the time. Right now, if you have a mobile phone near you, there's microwaves whizzing through the air right past you, but you just can't see them because we haven't evolved to see them. So um, what do you need to know? Well, you need to know the order of these. So you need to know that radio waves is first, then microwaves, then infrared, then visible, then ultraviolet or UV rays, then X-rays, and lastly, Hang on, try and move this down. Lastly, gamma rays. You need to know that at the start, radio waves have a large wavelength and gamma rays have a short wavelength. You can look at them, the ordering in a different way. You could say that radio waves have a large, or sorry, small frequency, and gamma rays have a large frequency or a high frequency. So it, frequency is kind of an important one there as well because the higher the frequency, the more energy a wave carries. So higher frequency. Higher frequency means more energy. And if you think about it, that makes sense. Uh, one other way you could nearly scale these is danger in terms of radio waves have the lowest frequency. And so they're carrying the least amount of energy. And for that reason, radio waves aren't dangerous to us. But if you move further down the scale, if you keep moving down the scale, you start getting towards ultraviolet rays, X-rays, gamma rays. They have high frequencies or large frequencies, and that means they carry a large amount of energy. And as they carry more energy, they become more dangerous to us as well. So you, you already know, for example, that you should only have a certain amount of X-rays per year. Um, overexposure to X-rays can lead to uh, things like cancer. And it's the same with UV rays. UV rays are, are invisible rays that come from the sun. They're the rays that give you a suntan. So if you ever get on a sunbed, it's UV rays that are being pointed down at you. But too much exposure to these high frequency waves uh, is dangerous because it can lead to things like cancer, as I said. So you need to know the order and you need to know those facts. Um, there is a mnemonic to kind of help you remember the order. It's a little bit weird, but it works. It's rabbits mate in very unusual expensive it's hard to get a word beginning with x gardens so if you learn off that mnemonic it helps you remember the order radio waves microwaves infrared visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. So 
that's most of what I want to cover today or the next thing I want to cover actually before we finish up is the properties of each of these waves as I said they're all very very similar but they have a couple of properties that they share that you want to know as well so you want to make sure you add this into your notes and if I'm going too fast remember you can pause the video and go back and uh, rewind some of it if, if you need to so properties of EM for electromagnetic waves. So first property is, and it's a really, really important one, is they all travel at the speed of light. And you need to know what that number is, and we've come across it before, it's three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. The second property you need to know is that they're all transverse. So we've talked about longitudinal waves, sound waves, and electromagnetic waves are all transverse. They can all travel in a vacuum. They don't need particles. Unlike sound waves, which need particles, electromagnetic waves don't need particles. So they can travel in a vacuum and proof for that is that light can get from the sun to us on earth going through space which is a vacuum um, the last property which is probably useful for you to know is that because they're waves they can all be reflected just like light waves can be reflected refracted and diffracted. So because they're wave and they're wave phenomenons that we've learned before, diffracted, they can all uh, be applied to electromagnetic waves as well.